守る生き物のために打ち崩せ風が吹きこの意志で十分これくらい動作もない貴様らに万倍の苦痛を与えるはあ Oh my goodness. Hyper Carry Arlon is finally here. <laughs> He's been definitely, I would say, one of the most requested characters for me to build, but we had so many destruction characters released back to back to back. We had Jing Nyo, we had Imbiber Lune, and then a couple patches before that we had Blade. So. I kind of left him in the dust for a bit, but he's finally here, and I gotta say, I am really impressed. I'm like, he's blown me away. <laughs> Now, for the usual disclaimers, of course, because I want to be careful, this is Arlen at his max potential. We're running a Tingyan, Branya, and even a Fushuan, right? So, everything here is Arlen. He's E6 as well, he's got really good relics. That's the thing about this series though, I always try to showcase underrated characters at their full potential. So, unfortunately we don't have a what you'd expect Arlen to do. But actually, if you think that's a good idea, let me know in the comments if I should also show characters at their free-to-play potential. So, using a free-to-play light cone, maybe less relics, and not Branya and Tingyan. Well, maybe Tingyan, but Branya just makes... So, the thing with Arlen and Branya is... Arlen doesn't consume skill points with his skill, and that makes him work really well with Branya, because instead of going neg 2, you only go neg 1. <laughs> But yeah, I think it might be good to showcase characters at their free to play potential too. With I could have given him an S5 Eon, which actually is quite strong. Though the main reason I like to show characters at pretty much their full potential is we all like seeing big numbers, right? It's so satisfying when you see a Fire Trailblazer or an Asta doing 200k or like 100k single target. It gets those juices flowing in your head and it's just like, oh, it, it, it's so satisfying. But yeah, no, I definitely think it's a good idea to do that too. I haven't taken him to Swarm yet, so I will do a full Swarm clear. I'm trying to think what path would be best for him. I think Destruction actually would be. I don't know if he can solo. Like, I did solo Clara, I did solo Blade. Can you imagine if I did a solo Arlen Swarm 5? Like, the entire Swarm, right? That's the goal. I don't know if it's possible, because he doesn't have... Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm actually of the belief that you can fully solo Swarm 5 with any characters given the right blessing luck. But, I... I don't know about that statement, actually. <laughs> right now I'm trying solo Ching Chia and I'm not really having any luck. I pretty much need to get all the Propagation Blessings, then Destruction Interplay and Preservation. So she nullifies the first hit she takes, gets a 60% of her max HP shield, and then she can just one-shot every enemy. But getting to that point, like playing one in all these solo challenges is by far the hardest. Also, we just zero cycle Memory of Chaos 10, so yeah. I mean, we are using pretty crack support, so you're gonna see all their builds right now, and then we'll fight the second half. So let's take a look at this. Fushuan, I gave her this light cone because I wanted to test something out and I didn't want to reduce the team's, or I didn't want to heal the team with her signature because it makes, <laughs> Arlen needs to be low health to do damage. Like he's the, I, I don't want to say he's the Hu Tao of this game, but His kit kind of works like that, except it scales as a percentage up to a maximum point when he has le less HP than his max. But yeah, Branya. Branya is E2, which enables me to use attack percent or HP boots on some, or attack percent boots instead of speed on some of these characters. It helps me get the zero cycle. I know it's possible to do a zero cycle with speed boots, Arlen, and making him go first, and you don't need E1 or E2. I'm not skilled enough to do that yet. Like, I need to do some math to calculate all that, and I don't know. It's way easier for me to do this and exploit her E2. <laughs> But yeah, just so you see what I'm going with, we have Planetary Rendezvous Tingyun with 2,500 attack because Fushuan 
Usually I build her with HP and defense, Tingyun that is, but with Fushuan, I don't need to worry about survivability, so I can just go full attack to buff the hyper carry. But yeah, four piece hacker space. I don't even know if four piece is needed, but she's super speedy. She's got all her Eidolons, and then of course, Arlon. Oh, he's all the way in the back here. 75.7, 163.4, rocking in Bibner Lunay's light cone. Honestly, yeah, the crit rate is massive, but it's the base attack. The high base attack makes it more valuable than some of the other light cones. And for me, I found the most success with this. Yeah, I didn't get his last ascension trace because it didn't really increase his damage. And I don't have any more materials to get him to 80. So this is what we're stuck with. But four piece sizzling and two piece rudolence. Yeah, this, this rope is kind of nuts. <laughs> but we did get his E6 off of standard, and that was one of my motivating factors for our kit. I gotta build this guy. Quick reminder that only 16.3% of you are subscribed, so if you're enjoying the video, I'd appreciate it a lot if you left a like and subscribed. So I wanted to see how he did in the second half, because the Void Rangers, or Void Templars, aren't lightning weak, so it's a little bit more difficult. Yan Ching is though, and it should be a pretty good fight because he's mostly single target. Well, I guess the blades aren't, but yeah, Arlen should still be able to crush it with the same team. Wait, I just realized I said Void Templar, but that's uh, that's a Starcraft unit. <laughs> well, I think. Oh yeah, Void Tramplers. Okay, Void Ranger Tramplers. That's the, that's what these guys are called. But yeah. Anyway, I think with Arlen, the best path in Swarm would be Destruction because. It can bring him down to low health and also just keep him alive if we get all the fighting spirit bonuses. And I think there's stacking attack and defense and then the damage reduction one would be huge. So we can definitely try it. I don't know about Arlen solo yet. We should just do a full hyper carry run with him. <laughs> I think it'll be good. Arlen, yeah, he does hurt himself a lot, but he does crazy damage to make up for it. I think the biggest problem, like... It's noticeable, especially if you're not using Branya, is he's locked into single target on his skill, which isn't too bad because his alt does cleave. I feel like there's potential somewhere for him to be a sub DPS too, because he doesn't use skill points on his skill. So it could be very skill point efficient, like we can run him with... You know what might be... No, it doesn't work the same way. I was thinking maybe running Jing Niu with him. And even Jing Niu with Blade isn't... like. It works, right? I did just make a video on this, and she can increase Blade's fall attack count by a lot. Though, how useful that is, we have no idea. I feel like in those teams, Blade or Jing Niu, they're gimping each other by... Or actually, Jing Niu's acting as a support, and she's gimping herself. You're better off running her as a hyper carry in most situations, rather than giving her Blade for the fall attack fodder. <laughs> So in that sense, I don't think Arlen provides any value in those teams because he doesn't even have the fall up attack stack counter. The only thing is she'll drain his HP so he'll get his damage boost faster. But at that point, you're probably having difficulty surviving. <laughs> yeah, after playing Arlen a bit, I realized that you can't really use a healer with him. Like you have to... Fushuan is definitely the best partner. You can use Japard, you can use Fire MC. But you can even use March, but Fushuan, the damage mitigation, the apportioning. But yeah, if we get more units in the future that mitigate like her, then Arlen's stonks go up. Otherwise, he is really tough to manage. Like, you want him to be low health, otherwise he doesn't get all those damage boosts. But I actually want to say, with Arlen, I feel like he's one of those characters that is rewarding to play. A lot of characters, you jump through a lot of hoops to make them work, and then they do like average damage or not what you'd expect. Arlen though, the output that you get is almost directly proportional to how much effort you put in. Like setting up his teams, and then his investment level, like light cones, relics. It feels good that your effort actually pays off when you play him. He's got a really high ceiling, as you can already see. Like, this side is more difficult for him for sure, and it's still respectable. We are using, again, his strongest team. I, well, I'm sure you can make a stronger team for the second half, but I just want to use the same one because I'm lazy. <laughs> and I also got to say, his animations, even though they look pretty simple, they're really satisfying. The way he just jumps at the opponent and then slams them to the ground. Oh, if only his skill was a blast attack too. Wait, you can see I was checking how much energy I had and maybe I could get my ult before taking down Yan Ching, but not needed. 
and that is two cycles on the second half with the same team. Now, I've got one last fight. This is Memory of Chanjo Stage 6. This is actually from the opening clip, and I thought some of you might be interested in seeing how I get these one-shot or giant nukes. Memory of Chanjo is the way to do it. So, these fishies, when they explode, they have a... I don't know what the base chance is. It might be 100%. But they have a chance to lower all enemies' defense by 30%, and it can stack unlimited amount of time. So, you could get... 100% defense down on the Ascended in wave 2 and once you do you apply all your buffs and you just go for a massive nuke turn So I'm gonna set it up show you how I do it and that's how I get most of these like 600 K 700 K's <laughs> Oh, yeah one last thing before I talk about this because there's nothing special going on We're just waiting for the Ascended to spawn Ethereum Wars. I haven't I still haven't touched it yet tomorrow. I'm gonna be streaming so Make sure to catch me live at twitch.tv slash artumbo. I don't know when the stream is going to be. It's either going to be afternoon Eastern time or at night, but hopefully it's a little earlier. So those of you in Europe, those of you in Southeast Asia, Australia, like all those places around the world, maybe you can catch me. But yeah, so we're at this point. The Ascendant can actually resist the defense reduction, which can be annoying, but we just need four of them to pop or three. Three gets us to 90%. 4 gets us to 100% because it caps out there. If we can get that, we're going to spend one turn buffing up Arlen and then going for that nuke. So we're still pretty far away from that point. We can kind of just use our alts liberally and chunk her down because we're not going to one-shot her from this point. This is still too much health, so we're pretty safe. I don't know if we'll get more Destruction Light Cones anytime soon because we just had so many Destruction characters, but... There's definitely more potential in the light cone department for him. Like right now, I think Imbiber Lunaise is best for all these speed runs, zero cycles. And the only, th like you're not ever using your basic attacks normally, so you're not getting that energy regenerate or attack percent bonus. So it feels really wasted. <laughs> but yeah, so now we have, I think, so we check. We check how many stacks it has. If it's at night, okay, so 90%, we can go for another stack if we want, and that's what we're gonna do. Hopefully, we can get it down to 100% defense reduction. So, there we go, 120%. The next wave, I think two of them actually clear themselves, so we might have overdone it. Yeah, sometimes you can only lock yourselves into three stacks, but it's also because Arlen's single target, now that I think about it. So yeah, 60%, we need to take out one more, but that's okay. So 90%, we have our alts, we have everything set up. Now we go, again, the order doesn't really, well, the order kind of matters. You use your Branya alts, you use your Yukong. If you don't want to one-shot them or make Yukong do much damage, use Yukong's alt before Branya's alt. But this is how it's done, and let's just enjoy the show. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the Arlen Showcase. Let me know what you think, and I will see you next time.